about 180 kilometers northwest of Cape Town and 60 or so inland from the Western Cape Coast is a unique mountain, the Piquetberg, rising almost 3,000 meters above the surrounding landscape. Moisture-laden clouds borne over the Atlantic Ocean race inland on the northwesterly wind to climb up the flanks of the Kitba, where they cool, condense, and fall as rain. Water gathers and seeps across this beautiful catchment until streams form, some find their way down beneath the majestic Mutonsuk Valley into hidden aquifers which provide groundwater far afield. Others fill the Krom and Tweni River, only home of the tiny endangered Fulurinflay redfin, and nurture vineyards, orchards, pastures, fields and people before flowing into the Fulurin River. follows a course through a valley of farmsteads and feinbos, past the peaceful town of Redlinghus, where formations of ancient Table Mountain series line up to protect the southern river bank. In these rocky fortresses, the first people lived 120,000 years ago and left their signs and traces for us to wonder at. Here the Karoo meets the Struntfelt. Unusual plants are to be found, including the conifer, Podocarpus elongatus, the only yellow wood tree to be found in such a low rainfall area. Over many tens of thousands of years, the Fuluran River has varied its course, leaving old beds to become aquifers and seeking new routes to the sea, until reaching a wide valley at Grootdrift and spreading out to become the magic for Luren Flay. The Fulurin Flay is a coastal lake and its home and breeding ground for hundreds of species of birds, a watering place for untold animals and a source of life for many humans, and so it has been for years as yet uncounted.
When the winter rains have filled the dams and rivers inland, the Falurin Flay rises and breaks through to the sea at Ilans Bay. So white steam brass and harders can then spawn and the cycle of life is refreshed. small piece of paradise it certainly is, and no one ever expected that an area of almost 4,000 square kilometers burgeoning with life would be threatened by the prospect of no water, polluted water, and poisoned air. Such is the way of the world we live in that this is indeed a possibility as a few individuals attempt to persuade our government that there is good sense in excavating a massive pit to mine financially unviable low-grade tungsten ore despite potential for environmental destruction and loss of way of life for thousands of people. At the moment you must look at it in a different way. We to, to make a good decision. You know, and we will do everything to make a good decision. Can we ask you one question here? That's are you aware. aware of the Falurin Valley? Of course we are aware. Okay. Now, are you going to be uh, um, are you going to be going further down the valley on your Ladies investigation? And I think it was nice meeting you. Can we get on our way? Yeah. Sorry, sir. The first people lived lightly on the earth for hundreds and thousands of years in such a way that we can live here now. Let us do the same for those who follow us. Thank you.